Okay, shall we start? So today I will discuss motion in a straight line. So you know which chapter is this one? Yeah, your voice is low. <coughs> Okay, so uh, you can make sense of these things, right? Yes, sir. Uh, you have to speak closer to the phone. I'm using headset term. Now it is audible. Your voice is very low. Now, okay, okay. Yeah, a little bit better. Okay, uh, so the things which you understand, I can go a little bit faster. I went through this notebook. Yeah, so you know what, what is meant by a straight line, right? Okay, and what is the, the, this one? This is the path of the particle. So this is not a straight line. Okay. So this is general path and the portion is changing from one, two, three, four, five, like that. As the time progresses, it moves like this. Okay. So to mention a position of a body, we need position coordinate. Position vector. So position order is denoted by the symbol R T. So you need to symbol, right? Yes. Ah, yes, sir. Okay. Now I'm able to. Yeah, a little bit better. Okay, sir. So, when is your laptop coming? By Friday, Saturday. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So, the particle you can model as either a particle, a body, you can model either a particle or a system of particles or a rigid body. So in this chapter, the body is considered as what? Particle yeah. system. Which one? I don't remember, sir. In this chapter, the body we consider as a point mass. Okay. Hi, yes, sir. Now only in chapter six, uh, where we are starting the center of mass, there only we are considering uh, this body yes, has got some size. Okay. And the system of particles comes in gas. Even center of mass, you can think of system of particles, but uh, it's more like a rigid body. When you consider yes. center of mass and rigid rotational motion, we are considering more like a rigid body. But when you consider gas, it's not a rigid body, it's like the system of particles. It's a gas molecules. Yeah. And uh, types of motion. Okay, these are all brief uh, overlook. We'll come back to this later. Okay, so right. So what what is the difference between this and this? On the, the third one. Third one is plane, sir. Uh, second one. Um, second one is line. First one. First one yeah, first one is line, it's along the x-axis. So the particle is moving like this. Okay, second one is plane. Plane means we need two coordinates, x and y. Okay, line means we just need x coordinate. And in general, if it is a point in space, we need all the three coordinates, x, y, and z. Yes, sir. Okay, so for us, we, we just need three coordinates because we are living in a 3D world. What is a 1D problem means? This will be in one variable only. Straight in motion also also means a 3D motion is a 1D motion. Okay. So this is a 1D motion which is along x-axis. This is also a 1D motion, but it is in some uh, general direction. So if we define a new axis like this, say this is x1. 
I can define new axis, right? X axis is not. If we define an axis like this, X1, then it will be a 1D problem. It will depend only on X1. Similarly, if I define a new axis like this in this direction as X1, then it will become a 1D problem. So in third case, how do you define the as 1D problem? See, um, let us come to 2D. So here it is same moving at an angle theta with the X axis. Okay, so if I choose this coordinate x and y, then I have to specify both x and y for mentioning the portion of this point. Suppose I take another coordinate system, say x1 in this direction, then I need only x1. Yes, sir. Okay, so if I choose coordinates properly, coordinate system or coordinate axis properly, I can reduce the dimension of the problem. Okay, yes, sir. So here the plane. Uh, problem we can say is counted into 1D. So here also, if there is some point in space, I can draw a line from the origin to this point and extend that line and call that as my X1 axis. Okay, so in this case, for mentioning the portion of this point, I just need to fix X1. So in third case, uh, uh, we have included that X1 and X1 how do you define the position of the particle between like one coordinate? See, x-axis, the first one is like this, right? Ah, x, sorry, y, x, y, and z. But now if you choose a second coordinate system like x1 like this, which is, I take up origin and the point and then extend that line and call it x1. So in this new coordinate system, this point A will have only x1 coordinate. <coughs> Both y1 and z1 are zero. Yes, sir. X1 is like this. So, uh, say y1 will be like this. And say z1 will be like this. So, in this new coordinate system, this point A will have only x1 coordinate. Yes, sir. Okay. So, it's not very important, but just uh, for starting, I'm saying. So distance is the path length covered from moving from one point to another point. Okay, so if I'm moving from this point one to point three, say point one is the time t1 and point three is the time t3. Okay, and I'm taking this path, the daughter line path. So this path is, the path length is distance. Okay, displacements, I don't care how you went from one to three. I just want to know where you went finally and where you were initially. And I'll join the initial and the final points. So that straight end is a displacement. Okay. okay. So this is the difference between distance and displacement. Distance is the path length. And displacement is where is your final position compared to the initial position. And displacement is a vector. It will be from the initial point to the final point. Distance is not a vector. It's just a path length. Okay. Okay. So this is a simple question. So you, so usually the north direction is represented by upward direction, right? Yes, sir. This is north, and what is this direction? East. East. So this is west on the left side, and downward it is south. Okay. So to define a plane, we need two lines. Yes, sir. Right. So these directions will fix the plane. Right now, the plane is the plane of the paper. Yes, sir. Okay. I think this is again a simple question. Moving towards east, eight kilometers, and then west, six kilometers. So, what is the distance covered and displacement? Distance covered and displacement. Right. Initially, is the origin. So it's moving towards east, eight kilometers, and then moving towards west, six kilometers. So the total distance covered is the path length, that is eight plus six, 14. And the displacement is the initial point and the final point. How far is the final point from the initial point? That is two, right? Yes, sir. Right, so 
car is moving towards east 8 kilometers and then it stops and moves towards north 6 kilometers so what are the distance now of hypotenuse yeah so that will be and uh, this angle is 90 degrees why is it 90 right angle. yeah because it's initially it's going towards east and north right so the angle between east and north is 90 degrees Okay, so the displacement is uh, the hypotenuse that is square root of and the distance is 8 plus 6. So, which one is more? Distance is more or displacement is more? Distance. Yeah, and that's always true, right? No, in some cases it will be equal to displacement. Yeah, so in the best case, the displacement will be same as displacement. But uh, display, displacement cannot be more than distance. Yes, sir. Okay, and the fuel spent by the car depends on distance or displacement? Distance. Yeah. So distance is not a useless quantity. It has some meaning. Okay. So velocity means how fast the position is changing. Okay. So position of an object is uh, denoted by its coordinates, right? So suppose if it, if it is at this portion at the initial time, say t1, and, it, uh, and at a time t2, say it has moved here. Okay, so how, how fast the position? See, it would have moved like this. But as far as velocity is concerned, I don't care how you move, I just want to know the final position and the initial position and what is the distance between them. So, to find the velocity, I just have to know, know where the final position is with the initial position. So, this is the displacement and how much time it takes to travel this one. So, this let me call delta x or delta r and divided by the time it takes, say delta t, and this will be my velocity d. Okay. And speed means the path length. That is the distance by time. Is it clear? Yes, so, so here also speed will be more compared to the uh, velocity or the magnitude of the velocity. Because speed distance is more for the same time. Here delta r is this. If you take the magnitude, it will be this distance. So always speed is more than the velocity. Average velocity is changing position during the time interval. So here I define the change in position across the time interval, right? So yes. if the time interval is finite, then it's average. If, for example, if I take an in-between uh, point, say like this. Okay, so what is the velocity between when it goes from here to here. For that, I have to take this point and this point. So this will be my delta r. Okay, yes, and, the, and the corresponding delta t. So this will be the velocity where it went from here to here. Okay, so, and after that, I can have one more velocity. And it's move from here to here, right? Say v2, v1. And this is in some sense average because I'm not bothering how it went in between and all. I'm just taking the full thing and calculating the velocity. Okay, so when I take a finite time interval, it becomes average velocity. If this time interval becomes very, very small, suppose I take from here to very, very small time. When the time interval becomes small, the time interval is denoted by dt. Okay, delta t is some finite time interval. So when the delta t becomes very, very, very small, then it becomes dt. Okay, so this distance it's called dr instead of delta r. I'm calling dr because very small. This dr by dt will become instantaneous velocity. This sort of finite time interval, the velocity is called average velocity. And when it is when the time interval is very small, it becomes instantaneous time, instantaneous velocity. 
right? Similarly, average speed, the path length, it's always path length by time interval, but if it is over for a finite time interval, then it's average speed. And the time interval becomes very small, then it is instantaneous speed, right? Uh, ask again. Is that instantaneous speed and the average speed same? That, that, that is not clear. Okay. See, similarly, from going from here to here, okay, the speed is this one, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so similarly from going from here to here, this point, the speed will be this path length divided by the corresponding delta t. Right? And speed from going from here to here, that will be this path length divided by the corresponding delta t. Okay, but if you take a larger time interval, it's some sort of an average, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so similarly, if you make this time interval very, very small, so this path length divided by this time interval, that will be instantaneous. Speed. This, is, this is like average speed, the full path length over the full time. And if this time interval becomes very small, then it becomes instantaneous speed. Clear? Yes, sir. So that's what if you want to get instantaneous velocity, you just have to make this time interval very, very small. When the time interval becomes almost zero, it is called dt. The corresponding uh, uh, displacement interval becomes dx. And dx by dt, the geometric interpretation is slope of a tangent. This you must be knowing by now. Okay. If you have a curve y versus x, then dy by dx is slope of the curve in yx plane. Similarly, if I have a curve in xt plane, x-axis is time, y-axis is x. Okay, then in that case, dx by dt will become slope of the curve in xt plane. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So whenever we have plane, we need to think of two variables. Here the two variables are time variable and the x, uh, x variable. So the dx by dt is slope of that curve in xt plane. So this is the xt plane. And uh, this is x axis, this is uh, x axis time, and y axis is the x. So dx by dt is the slope of this curve, that will be the time length. Instantaneous speed is the magnitude of this velocity. <coughs> And uh, this thing, average velocity will become slope of a secant. Uh, tangent is what? Your tangent at a point of a curve is a line which just touches that curve at that line, right? So secant means uh, it's like a chord. For a circle, you know what's a chord, right? Diameter, sir. Diameter is a maximum uh, chord. But uh, in general, for a circle, Tangent at this point is it will be like this. This is tangent, right? It's just touching at one point. Okay. Suppose if it is like this, then this part is chord. Right? If it passes okay. through center, it's also a chord, but it's a special chord, which is a diameter. Yes, sir. Diameter is also a chord, but it's a chord of maximum length. In general, chord means the, the two points where it will cut the curve. So this is, instead of circle, we have a curve. And uh, so this line is cutting this uh, curve at these two points. So the average velocity is this distance delta x by delta t. So that is slope of the secant. Yes, sir. And acceleration is how fast the velocity is changing. So, so that is length of the second one you mentioned. Which one? Which one? That average velocity. Average velocity is uh, the line which touches one and three on that curve. 
that, that is tangent. See, this is tangent, right? So if we want to define instantaneous velocity at this point, I have to draw the tangent. But if I have to get average velocity between, say, 2 and 3, then I have to draw this secant. So slope of this secant will be the average velocity between time t2 and t3. Okay. If you want to get instantaneous velocity, you have to mention the time instant. If you have to get the average velocity, you have to mention the time interval. So I have to say average time interval between t2 and t3. But you have to say instantaneous velocity, I have to say instantaneous velocity at t2 or instantaneous velocity at t3 or t4, t5 like that. So acceleration means velocity means how fast the position is changing with time. So acceleration is how fast the velocity is changing with time. So it will be delta v by delta t. Again, if the interval in delta t is finite, which is not very, it is small but not very small. So that is called average acceleration. It's, so it's acceleration in the time interval t1 and t2. And when this delta t is becoming zero, very, very small, then it becomes instantaneous changing velocity with respect to time. That is acceleration and that is instantaneous acceleration. So, so, so similarly in the VT graph, if we draw time versus V, so some variation is like that. If you have to get acceleration at this time instant, that will be the tangent at this point. If you have to get average acceleration between these two time intervals, then you have to draw a secant between these two points and the slope of the secant will be the average acceleration. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is part of uh, basic mathematics which is required for solving physics problems. So differentiation, you know uh, the basic idea, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So what is a function? Function is denoted by f of x, right? Yes, sir. And what does this f of x mean? X is a variable, right? Y, f of x means. Yeah, f of x is usually represented by y, and x is x is a variable, right? Yes, sir. And y is also a variable. Y, which is f of x, that is also a variable. But x is called independent variable, and y is called dependent variable. Depend yeah, so independent variables, it's more free to, we can choose the value. So, and output is dependent on this input. So Y is dependent on X. So that's why it's called this dependent variable. Okay, so function, we can think as a mapping from X to Y. You know what is mapping, right? Yes, sir. How, how, how do you relate one value here to one value here? So, so if it's connecting x and y, so now, now we have to ask if we change this x by small amount delta x, how much will y change? Okay, so if y, let the amount of change be delta y. Okay, so if delta y is very large, say, suppose I'm changing delta x by 0.1 and delta y is changing as 10. Okay, and for the change of delta x 0.1, and delta i changes one. So which one it changes more? The first one, right? Delta y. Yeah. So how much delta y is changing for the given delta x? To get that idea, that is called uh, derivative of the function. So derivative of the function gives an idea of how fast the y is changing when I change x. Okay. okay, and uh, this delta y by delta x, when this delta x is becoming very small, it's called dy by dx. And if we change dx, x by small amount dx, corresponding change in y will be dy. And this ratio dy by dx is called derivative of f of x and is done by f, f dash x. So suppose if I have, so here the functions are x and y. So if you have to draw a curve of f of x, 
x axis will be x and y axis will be y and this is a function let me take a simple function which is a straight line and the straight line pass through origin so this is one f of x let me call it f one x and this is another line f two x so which one the variation is more f one or f two which one the slope is more Can you tell f one or f two? You can hear me. You can hear. You can hear, right? Yeah, one more. Okay. F one. Okay. So to understand that, we just have to take this. See small interval. Angle. Yeah, the angle is fine, but you have to understand it better. So if you take this same, see delta x, the corresponding change in delta y is this much for this f two, and the same delta x means I have to extend the same thing. So this delta y will be more. Okay. Yes, sir. Delta y two. This is delta y one. So delta y one is more. Compared to delta y two, so for the same change in x, how much y is changing? So if it is more steep, means the change in y will be big. So this one, the slope is more. So this is for a straight line. Similarly, for a curve, also we can take the derivative. Suppose this is a curve, so I want to find the derivative at this point. So at this point, I just have to take a small interval dx. Okay, and for that dx, how much is this y changing? Okay, so this dy corresponding to this dx, that is called the slope, which is the derivative. Okay, so at this point, okay, so can this uh, derivative be negative? No, sir. If it is like this. Ah, yes, sir. For this dx, the change in delta y is negative, right? Okay. Okay. So here, the derivative is negative. Okay. So these two are positive slopes. So a negative slope will be like this, right? If you change x by this much, y is changing by this much. Y is decreasing, right? X is increasing, and Y is decreasing. That is the meaning of negative slope. So here there are two points P and Q. So from P to Q, uh, Y is changing by delta Y, and X is changing by delta X, and delta Y by delta X is the slope of the secant. So when this delta X is becoming very very small, this secant Will become a tangent, and this tangent is called derivative. For derivative, we have to take dy by dx. Dx means very very small. Derivative is not delta y by delta x. It is dy by dx. Okay. Okay, that's what I've said. And these things you have to know because when solving problems, uh, these things you know, right? These are uh, simple. Yes, sir. Okay, u v rule and derivative of sine x is cos x, right? And uh, yes, how do you how do you remember this? Whether it's see you will get a confusion whether it is positive here or negative here. So how will you remember this one? Derivative of sine is cos and cos is sine. I mean it's opposite. But this sine how can you remember? I don't know if it's a but I remember. Okay, you know graph of sine x, right? It's a sine and cos similar. Okay, so this is x and y-axis is sine x, or you can say y equal to sine x. So the graph will look like this, yes, and it'll keep on going like this. Okay, so just just uh, let me concentrate on this first quadrant. What is this value of x here? 
Yeah. Or pi by 2 radians. So let me just consider on this first quadrant. So here, the slope, is it positive or negative? Positive. Uh, so that's why it's positive here. Just for sake of remembering, I'm missing. Okay. okay. So derivative of sin x, just consider on the first quadrant, the slope is positive and cos curve will look like this. Right? In the first quadrant, after that, we keep on going. So here the slope is negative, right? In the first quadrant. Yes. That's why you have a negative sign here. Oh, okay. Just for remembering the sign I'm saying. Okay. Yes, so when you say sin x, this figure should come into your mind, this graph, and cause it's this graph. Or even if you remember one of them, you know it's other one is opposite to that. Okay. Okay. Derivative of log x is 1 by x, and this log is to the base e. Derivative of e is for this e is for x. Okay, so these things are standard. Okay, so this is a portion of how the portion is changing with time. Okay, so the, can you uh, comment on what is happening here? So from four to 10 seconds, and from 10 to 18 seconds, and from 18 to 20 seconds, and after 20 seconds. So what is happening? Can you just looking at this variation of x with time? Can you see what is happening here? See from uh, uh, zero to 10 seconds, um, slope of this xt curve is velocity, right? Velocity is dx by dt. So here, initially the slope is zero right yes, sir. and what about the slope here at this second point here at seven seconds say it's positive and it's more than this one right and what about yes, at nine seconds the slope is more than what is there at seven it okay so what can you say the velocity is increasing right yes, sir. velocity is slow so velocity is increasing from zero to ten seconds and from 10 to 18, what is happening to the slope? What is the slope here? What is the slope here? Yeah, because it's a straight line. Okay, in a straight line, between any two points, the slope is constant. That is the definition of straight line. So here, V is constant. And what is happening here from 18 to 20 seconds? Again, it rises velocity. Slope is like this, and here the slope is what? At 20 seconds, what is the slope? No slope. Becomes zero. Yeah. So initially, here the slope is some positive value, and here slope is becoming zero. So velocity is decreasing. Right? Yes, sir. And after 20 seconds, what is the velocity? Zero. Yeah. So what is happening is it's from zero to slowly increasing and the velocity is constant and then the velocity is decreasing and stopping. Right? So this is x versus time graph. So if you plot this thing in velocity versus time graph, that's what is shown. Initially velocity is zero, slowly increasing. And at uh, nine seconds here, or 10 seconds rather, 10 seconds, the velocity has become after after the velocity is constant up to what are 18, 18 seconds. After that, the velocity is decreasing and it's becoming 0 to 20. Uh, at 20, the velocity has become 0. Okay, so this xt curve, from this xt curve, we can draw this vt curve. Yeah, but the, in the displacement graph, but the, in 19 seconds, the velocity is increasing. Speak clearly. If you see the displacement graph at 19 seconds, the velocity is increasing on the Yeah, yeah. At 20, it is even zero. Ah, so, but we have drawn that um, in the velocity graph, we have pointed mm. that. See, 18, up to 18, it is constant. From 18 to 20, it is decreasing. At 19 to second, it seems yeah. like it is increasing on the motion. No, no. Ah. See, no, 
and I'll explain. See here, you have to see the slope here at 18 and slope at 19. This slope is less than this slope. See, this, 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 at 18, the curve is more steep. At 19, it's getting flatter, no? See, when the slope is increasing, the curve graph will go like this. When the slope is decreasing, the graph will go like this. Okay, the less steep. Huh, less steep. Here, here it is more steep. After that, it's less steep. See, this curve is less steep as time increases. Here it is initially less steep. After that, it becomes more steep. So okay. the thing which is going as U, the thing will become more and more steep. This is inverted U. Okay. okay. Uh, there are only two possibilities. One is U, other is inverted U. So U means the slope will keep on increasing. Inverted U means the slope will keep on decreasing. Initially, it's very steep. After that, it's decreasing. So slope is keep on decreasing, but still it's positive, positive slope, but it's decreasing. At 20, it's going to be zero. Yes, so acceleration is how fast the velocity is changing. So if you take how the slope is changing of this curve, so it will come like this. So from zero to 10 seconds, the slope is constantly increasing, right? That means acceleration is positive. Acceleration is slope of this curve. And it's always positive. So initially it's less steep. It's even more and more steep, right? So that's why acceleration is zero here and then it's becoming increasing to some value at 10. And from 10 to 18, acceleration is zero, the slope is zero. That's why the acceleration is zero from 10 to 18. And after that, this is negative slope. As X increases, yes. y, y is decreasing. And here is a straight line. So the negative slope is constant throughout. Here is a positive slope, but the value of the positive slope is increasing. So straight line has no slope now, sir? No, no, straight line has slope, Zero. but constant slope. Um, slope of a straight line will be zero. No, no. See, this is a straight line with some slope, right? This is a straight line with another slope. Straight line with zero slope is this line. A horizontal line. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And straight line with maximum slope is this one. Here the slope is infinite. Even without changing x, y is increasing. Okay. Yes. So at 45 degrees, the slope is 1. If you change delta x by 1, delta y will also change by 1. Okay. F2, the slope is less than 1. F1, the slope is greater than 1. Okay. So the slope is 0 here, less than 1. Up to here, 45 degrees is 1. And after this, greater than 1. And here it becomes infinite. Here will be 10,000 like that, 99 like that. Okay. Yes, so here it's constant negative slope. That is a constant negative value, some negative value. And here it is positive, but it's not constant. Right? So acceleration is not constant, but it's positive, but it's increasing. So from XT curve, we can draw BT curve and AT curve. AT curve from BT curve, first get this one, and after that you can get acceleration time curve. Okay. So an integration is reverse of differentiation. When I differentiate f of x, I get f dash x. So if I integrate f dash f dash x, I'll get f of x. So derivative of sine x is cos x, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Huh. And it's plus cos x. And integration of cos x is sine x. Huh. Derivative of cos x is what? Minus sine x. Huh. So integration of sine x is what? Minus cos x. Huh. So integration of minus sine x is cos x. So I can take the minus sign outside and then say integration of sine x is minus cos x. Okay. So you can fix the sine of uh, sine confusion in this derivative and from there from, if you remember this one from this you can get integral of sine s minus cos and integral of cos is plus sine okay so to remember the to fix the sign just remember this one sine curve 
Okay. So derivative of x square is 2x. So integral of 2x is x square. So integral of x will be x square by 2. Okay. So derivative of x raised to the power n is any 2 x raised to the power n minus 1. So integral of x raised to the power n minus 1 will be x raised to the power n divided by n. Okay. And then we can add a constant to it because derivative of a constant is 0. So when I indicate something, I can add an arbitrary constant. And this constant is a real number. Uh, derivative of sin x is cos. So integral of sin, cos x is sin x. And uh, uh, geometric integration of derivative, that is dy by dx is slope of the curve, right? So similarly, integral of f of x, the geometric integration is area under the curve. Yes, sir. So if you have a curve, say uh, x versus y, so this is y axis, y is f of x, and this is x, and there is a curve which relates x and y. So actually the instance integration comes uh, when you put the limits of integration. So a to b means x equal to a to b. So integral of uh, f of x from a to b limit is area under this curve. So if we take a slope at this point, that will be f dash x. And if we take the area from a to b, then it will be integral of f of x between the limits a and b. For geometrical interpretation of derivatives, you don't need the limits at all. It's just at, at a point. But for geometrical interpretation of integration, we have to fix some limits between A and B. Okay. So similarly, the integration, some of the constant rules of integration. So these things you know, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So 1D motion means there will be only one, one space variable. Okay. Time is always there, but space will be only one variable. And we are considering uniformly accelerated motion. So what is it by uniform acceleration? Acceleration is constant. Yeah. So actually, there is some difference between constant and uniform. What is meant by constant? What is meant by uniform? With respect to time, it will not change. That is constant. With respect uh -huh. to space, I'm not saying that it's uniform. But here, um, yeah, so actually here, uh, suppose the particle is here at time t1, and at the data time t2, it has moved here. So this is a different point in space, right? So the acceleration is not changing here. But at time t1, the acceleration is some value. At time t2, the acceleration is the same value. Okay, so even with time also, it's not changing. So here it's actually not depend on both space and time. Okay. Yes, sir. But strictly uniform means it's a space. Yes. Okay. But since uh, the particle it's moving in space, and since the acceleration of the particle is not changing, but its position is changing time, so it also means that it is not changing with time. Okay. So, okay. so in this particular case, it means it's constant with time also. So acceleration dt by dt and in terms of and velocity is dx by dt. So you know this uh, notation, right? d square x by dt square is the second yes, derivative sir. of x with respect to time. And acceleration uniform means it's not dependent on both space and time. And if I differentiate, integrate this thing both the sides, I'll get this one. Here, uh, the variables are b and t. Instead of y, so... So this thing will become a dt equal to db, right? So yes, sir. I have to integrate both the sides. And the variables are b and t. Okay. So a is constant because it's unique. So a will come out and it will become a dt and integral of dt is t and integral of v db is v plus the integration constant, right? Is it clear? Yeah, apply limits for the huh. so to, find, to find this integration constant at time t equal to zero, velocity is the initial velocity. Let me call it the u. 
okay so from this i get uh, b plus u equal to 80 from so i'll get b equal to b minus u okay actually uh, i can b is u so actually this c is bigger than minus u yes sir or i can put this integration constant here by integrating both the sides i can put integration on both the sides and i can bring it on one side and combine it or i can just put the integration constant on one side okay okay so this is one equation you will be using and uh, if and this velocity v is dx by dt right so again this dt i can take it on this side so it become u dt plus at dt equal to dx now how will find x i have to integrate both sides right yes sir if you integrate both the sides so this will become x some plus some constant and u u is the initial velocity right it's it's a constant it's not changing with time so it'll become ut and integral of t is what t squared by 2 t squared by 2 so i have to fix this constant so this constant i can fix at time t equal to 0 let x be 0 okay let me assume that it's starting from origin since it's starting from origin x equal to 0 at time t equal to 0 so from this i get x equal to ut plus half a t squared okay so the starting point is this one a equal to v dv by dt and a is uniform it means it's not changing in space and time also so from this i get this one the differentiating ones sorry integrating ones and b is dx by dt so integrating the second time i get this one okay and here if you take that time here t is there and t square is there so i can take t outside so it become ut plus half a t square okay and uh, sorry ut plus half a t and this i can write as u plus u plus a t i'm taking this half outside this is simple manipulation is it clear if you take this half outside you become 2u plus a t and 2 i can write as u plus u is it okay yes sir okay and u plus a t is b right yes sir uh, so from this i get u plus b into by 2 into t equal to x so this is same as this one b equal to u plus a t but in a different form so to, to remember this equation we just have to think it's u plus b by 2 is average velocity right average velocity means you have to take Velocity at one point, one time instant, and velocity at another time instant. Take the average. If there are two quantities, the average of two quantities, sum of them divided by two. Average of three quantities, sum of them divided by three. Right. So here I am taking two points only. So u plus v. So two points divided by two. So u plus v by two is the average velocity. So average velocity in time is x. Right. So x squared u t plus half t squared. That is one way of getting x. Another way of getting x is average velocity u plus v by two into t. And uh, this is one more thing. U we can write as v minus at into t plus half at square equal to x. Here is this one, this equation. So simplifying, we get v t minus half at square equal to x. So this also you can remember. So v equal to u plus t. This you should be wrong. You already know, and this also you know. It should be u plus half t square. And this one you try to remember. This you can remember as x is average velocity into time. And this also you try to try to remember. Instead of u, if you put v, it will become v t minus half t square. See the fold distance. Let me assume that u is less than v. So the fold distance traveled in the time interval say t. It will be more than u t, but it will be less than v t, right? 
because say u is say two meters per second, and b is say five meter per second. So that whole time interval, I'm not traveling with this same speed. I'm just traveling with two, two point one, two point two, three, and then four point nine five. So this distance traveled will be more than two into the total time, and it'll be less than five into the total time. Is it true? X will be greater than u t and less than v t. Is it clear? Can you please rise your voice, sir? See, suppose I'm moving from this point to this point, but in a time interval t, okay, and at this point the the velocity is two meters per second. When I reach the final point, the velocity has increased to five meter per second. Okay, so this total distance traveled, it will be some average velocity into this time interval, right? Yes, sir. Suppose I assume that the whole thing is moving at two meters per second. I'll get the distance as u into t. Suppose I am assuming that the whole distance I am traveling with v speed, then the distance travel will be v t. But the actual distance travel will be more than u t, right? Yes, sir. And the actual distance travel will be less than v t because I am not tra traveling the full distance with this maximum speed. Here will be two. Here will be two point one, two point two, two point three. Sub so three and then four point nine and then five, right? So it's constantly increasing. But if you take the full time interval as v, then the x will be less than v t, and x will be greater than u t, and the amount by which is greater than u t is half a t square. So that's why I have this formula. X will be u t plus this extra value. Yes, sir. Okay. So and it should be less than v t, and that amount by which it is less is Half e t square. Okay, so I'm just telling you the how to remember this minus sign and plus sign. So the distance travel will be u t plus something, but but if you take u t, it will be v t minus something. Oh yes. Sir. Okay. See these two you you know right? These two equations you know. Yes, sir. This one you know. Mm -hmm. Third one is an average number of farmer. Okay, to remember this one, that's what I said. It's average speed or average velocity yeah. interval. That way you can remember. Yes. And to remember this one, you have to use this one. Instead of u t, I'm writing v t, but it will be less than v t by the same amount, half a t square. So from this, you can remember this one. Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, distance travelled by a particle in n second. What is what what is meant by n second? In the last second, last okay. second. Suppose. Uh, the last and the n second and n minus. Okay. Uh, say this is one second and two seconds and say five seconds and say three seconds somewhere it is here. What is the distance traveled in third? Second. So the distance third second minus. Is it from here to here? No, sir. Ah, so it is th this one, right? Yeah, it is this distance. No, sir. Of, ah, uh, hold on. See, if t equal to zero will be somewhere here, right? So distance travelled in first second is this one. So distance travelled in third second place is it will be this one, not this one. Is it clear? Yes. Not this one. So distance travelled in third second will be this one. Between one second and actually this one. So it is a distance travelled in two seconds minus the distance travelled in one second. Because your first second means uh, distance okay. traveled in first second minus distance traveled in. Okay. Okay. What second. I said previously was correct. I got an essay confused. Okay, this is distance traveled in third second. This is distance traveled in three seconds minus distance traveled. So basically, you have to remember distance traveled in first second is what distance traveled in one seconds. 
My distance traveling is zero seconds, right? So distance traveling third second is distance traveling three seconds. My distance traveling two seconds. So we have the distance traveling in second is distance traveling in seconds x n minus x n minus one. Okay. So x n is uh, u into time is t plus half a t square n square minus u into n minus one plus half a n minus one square. Okay. So u and u will cancel. So there will be some u. So that's what is coming here. U and then half n square and half n square. N square will cancel. So the cross term two n. Okay, two n and then half I kept it outside. So it is two n here. And then one so here minus n is here. So it's minus one. Right. So yes, this formula you will remember or? I know. Yeah. Okay. So the way to remember this formula is u t. So t is just a time interval. It's one second. Plus half a. <coughs> Instead of t square, we have two n minus one. Okay. Just for remembering this formula, I'm saying distance is u t plus half a t square, right? So u into the time interval is one second, right? In seconds, in seconds, and in minus one seconds. So the time interval is one second. So it's u into one plus half a t square will become two n minus one. T square is basically uh, n square minus n minus one square. So n square square will cancel minus two n. And then we will become plus 2n and then plus 1 become minus 1. So this time is t square is this form n square minus n minus 1 square. Okay, so you do the time interval delta t that is 1 and then half a t square is n square minus n minus 1 and square that is 2n minus 1. Right? Okay, so this is positive view. Because here, there, here, what is the slope? Negative. Slope. Negative slope. Oh. As time is increasing, x is dropping down. Is delta x by delta t or dx by dt? So here it is zero, and here dx by dt is positive. Okay. So negative zero positive. So what is happening? The slope, slope is increasing, right? So a is positive. A is actually dv by dt. Here velocity is negative. Here velocity is zero and velocity is positive. So velocity is increasing. So dv by dt is increasing. So this is positive. Okay. So here Slope is positive, slope is zero, means slope is negative. Slope is what velocity? So velocity is decreasing, right? Velocity yes. decreasing means negative a. And here, slope is constant. So velocity is constant. That means rate of change of velocity, which is acceleration, is zero. So remember like this, u is positive a. This is inverted u. Okay, that's negative acceleration. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Relative motion. All right. Um, so relative motion is with respect to one object how the another object is. Suppose I have So this is x y code a. Uh, let me take one D motion. Say it's moving on its axis. So with respect to this origin, it is moving with some velocity, right? 
Suppose I take another point. CE, but this point E is moving. And say this, this, this particle is CB. Okay, so with respect to E, what is the velocity of B? Say VB will have some say value, some five meter per second. And say VE is two meter per second. So what is velocity of B with respect to E? Can you give me this answer? Three meter per second. Uh, so it is different from what is it with respect to the origin, right? Origin is say fixed. Okay. So with respect to origin is moving with some speed or velocity. So with respect to a moving another object. Okay. So its relative velocity is different. So this is basically the relative motion concept. So similarly, with respect to the origin, XB is increasing, right? And what about its B with respect to A? This also increasing, but less, right? Because point A itself is moving towards right. So the distance between A and B is less compared to the distance between B and the origin. Okay. So XBA is defined as XB with respect to A. So whatever the distance of XA that should be subtracted. Okay, so velocity of B is velocity of B with respect to E is also V B minus V A. So the velocity of B will get subtracted from velocity of B. Velocity of B will get subtracted from velocity of B to get the relative velocity. Similarly, I can define acceleration of B with respect to A as A B minus A. So acceleration of A should, should, should get subtracted from B to get the relative velocity of B with respect to A. This you can, uh, from this XB, XBA could be XB minus XA, I can get, if I differentiate this thing once, I'll get this one. And if I differentiate this thing, I'll get this one. So if we define one thing, I'll get the remaining things by taking the derivative. I can take this as a starting point. The position of B relative to A is XB minus XA. From this, if I differentiate this thing, I'll get velocity of B with respect to A. And if I differentiate this one, I'll get acceleration of B with respect to A. Okay, so this is for a 1D motion. When it becomes 2D, it will become a little bit more complicated. They have to put the vector notation. Okay, so that will come to uh, the next in next chapter. And uh, you know what? Sorry? sorry? We scroll to previous picture. And that second expression, I don't get it. So XB0 minus XA0. See, actually, no. I'm a little bit down. It's really minus integration constant. See, X equal to UT plus half AT square. There, the assumption is at time T equal to 0, X is 0, right? Oh, yes, sir. Huh. So instead of that, if I say at initial time, it is at location x equal to x naught, not x equal to zero. So it will get added to that x. So strictly, yes, strictly this thing is x equal to ut plus half a square. So in addition to that, I have to add x naught. Yes, and x naught is the value of x at time t equal to zero. Okay. Yes, okay. So this is understood. I just didn't want to make it more complicated. So just put uh, x naught as zero. So similarly, v equal to ut plus half a d square plus, sorry, uh, v equal to u plus a t plus, uh, oh no, there u is already there. That's not a problem. In x equal to ut plus half a d square, I have to add x naught. Yes, so here, uh, x naught is a value of x at time t equal to zero. If I take it zero as, as starting from origin, then this thing will become zero. Okay, but since I'm taking two particles or two bodies A and B, it's not. It's unlikely that both will be at the origin at the same at t equal to zero. That's why I introduce this x x b at zero and x x not at zero. In in that case, that initial velocity you have taken as zero, sir. 
Yeah, that's also an assumption. Okay, because we are assuming, uh, hold on. Yeah, velocity. See, when you take the relative, this thing, yeah, here the difference is coming. But when I differentiate this one, Uh, time t equal to zero is x naught, right? Uh, okay, I'll take this one. Yeah, here I'm assuming the initial velocity of both uh, A and B are same. Okay, this is the basic concept. The velocity you just have to subtract with respect to what you are, you are taking as reference. Okay, so if it is confusing, I'll, I'll come to that when you are discussing 2D. Okay, uh, actually the relative motion problems, uh, the one which is asking the test are 2D motions, 2D problems. Yes, sir. We have both problems. Okay. Uh, you know what's an initial frame? The frame which is not moving, sorry, which is at rest or moving with uniform velocity. Okay. Yes, uh, so here, um, this is x versus t graph of two bodies A and B. So, what can you say about them? Can you uh, say what is the difference between these two? Or what are the similarities between these two bodies A and B? What about they the have can't, their velocity is same, sir. Uh, because the slope is same. And what is the difference? Initial position of the yeah. So at time t equal to zero, this, this one A is at 10 meters and B is at. So if you, if I draw this picture, say along x-axis, particle A is starting from. 10 and moving like this. And particle B is starting from 20 and moving like this. This is the difference. And both X and Y are positive. Sorry, X is positive for both of them. And uh, so what can you say about this one? A is moving like this and B is moving like this. So what is the similarity? Similarity, they meet at at some point of time. No, there is no similarity, right? They have same position at that uh, third second. Uh, see, the velocity, is it constant for both of them? No. Different. Constant means not changing with time. See, if I take particle A, what is the velocity here? That is the slope here, right? And the velocity is slope of xt curve. So the velocity here and velocity here, are they same or different? Same. Uh, so it's a VA and VA. Okay. And the velocity here is what? VB. It's same, right? And it's VB, but different from VA. Which one is more VA or VB? VA. Uh, VA is greater than VB. Okay. What about acceleration? Acceleration of A. What is the value? Uh, no, acceleration zero. zero. What about acceleration of B? Zero. Uh, so, what is the similarity between A and B motion? They are same acceleration. Not same acceleration, zero acceleration. Same acceleration is fine, but the same acceleration is zero. Yes, sir. Both are not acceleration. Both are moving with uniform velocity. But the difference is uh, B is moving. Uh, what are, uh, yeah. So A is moving with say 5 meters per second, B is moving with 3 meters per second. But the acceleration is uh, zero. Both are moving with uniform velocity, but the value of the velocity is different. Okay? Yes. And what is the uh, difference between these two and what is the similarity? A with positive velocity, B with uh, negative velocity. So. Difference. Uh, 
So you have a right angle triangle A, B, C, and you know how is C related to A and B, right? Yes, sir. The vector addition. Yeah. So if you draw a triangle, which is uh, K times A and K times B, and then K times C, again this will be ninety degrees only. Okay, because again this relationship will be valid. A square will cancel, so C square should be A square plus B square, and that is true. So if this is true, means this also is true, right? Okay. Okay. So, so how do I get this this triangle from this triangle to to go from this triangle to this triangle? What I have to do? You have to multiply. Oh, magnify it. I increase the magnitude. Huh. So, what are these two triangles called? Right triangle. Similar triangles. Similar triangle. The angle is same. Okay. So, one way of getting similar triangles, you take the triangle and then magnify it. Okay. Similarly, if I, if I take half A, half B. And half C, okay. This also a similar triangle. Here I'm multiplying by half. Here I'm shrinking by half. Here I'm magnifying by say some five times. Okay. So all these things are similar triangles. Similar triangles, you take the triangle then either expand it or shrink it. Okay. So when I'm doing that, the angles of the triangle will be same. The angle will not change. Okay. The length will change. Okay, so this is an important thing. Okay, how many problems you have tried? Zero. Uh, have you tried any of the problems? Show me the problem. Okay. Okay, uh, this uh, let me go to a simpler problem. Okay, this is a simple one. Let's try this one first. Two cars P and Q start from a point, same time, straight line. Positions are given by this one. At what times do? So this is a 1D problem or 2D problem? 2D problem, sir. Uh, why is it 2D? One, sorry, one variable, one D problem. Huh. One space variable. So when I say 1D motion, it's, we're just talking about space variable. Time variable is always there, but 1D means one space variable. So here it's only x. Okay. So to get the velocity, what do you have to do? You have to differentiate. Yeah. So you have to take dx by dt of p and dx by dt of q. And same velocity means both have to be equal, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You have, you have pen and paper? Yes, I'm doing. Yeah. Can you just try? Try this one. Okay, second option. And uh, get me the answer. F minus A by B plus 1 into 2. No, what is the final answer? 1, 2, 3, or 4. Which option? Second option. 
Yeah, it is correct. So we quickly do this one, right? This is what you did. This is what you did, right? Okay. So this okay, this one. So distance between one and two. You can also write the symbols properly. So this is equal to distance seven, how many seconds? Three seconds or one second? Is it distance seven in three seconds minus two seconds? Three two minus one. Yeah. Three two by two plus D seven by three. There is third option, sir. Uh, how do you get D2? Even velocity, right? So, I simply, I simply integrated it. Yeah. So D is integral V dt. 28 is, what did he say? 3. Third up. Okay. Fine. The stone falls freely under gravity. It covers distance H1, H2, H3 in the first 5 seconds. This is the next five seconds and next five seconds. The relation between H1, H2, and H3. Yes. Uh, can you do this one? Sorry, I don't know how to do, but I remember for, formula like it will travel the distance of one is to three is to five is to. Yeah. So it will be in the ratio of odd numbers. If the time interval is constant, see here the first time interval is how many seconds? Five seconds. The second time interval is the same five seconds. And the next time it is the same five seconds. So if the time interval are equal, then the ratio will be one is to three is to five. Okay. If, suppose if it says first five seconds and the next four seconds and the next is three seconds, then that thing is not valid. Yes, sir. Is it clear? So equal time intervals means it will be the ratio one is to three is to five. So what is which option is the correct one? Third option. Uh, H2 will be more than H1, right? See, when it is falling under gravity. In the uh, parabola, that is in the right side also. See, when it is falling from a height, so for the first second, it will travel this much. For the second second, it will travel this much. And for the third second, it will be this much, right? So why, why is this uh, distance travel increasing? Velocity is increasing. Yeah. So here it is zero velocity. Here it has acquired some velocity. And the velocity is still increasing further. And it is still increasing further. So the distance travel will be more at the later time interval. So here H2 is thrice H1. And H3 is five times H1. So this is the correct option. Okay. Yes, sir. is three. Right. What about uh, this one? Okay, this, this is also the same thing. He's saying third second. So third second thing, distance traveled in. How are you going to use the formula? Uh, distance traveled in third second is D32, right? Or you can use the formula U into 1 plus half A. D square is 2N minus 1, right? Yes, sir. Dn formula. Ut plus half a t square. A t, t square will become 2 n minus 1. So what is, which, which one is the correct option? First option. Yes. Okay. What about this one? I don't know how to do stuff. Okay.
So you have to draw a figure. So basically it will look like this. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So when the skeleton is not working, so she will walk like this, right? She will like climb the skeleton like this. Okay. So that thing takes time, T1. Okay. And when the skeleton is moving, she is standing on one step. So it takes time, T2. Hold on. She walked up the escalator in time to one other day. She remains stationary. Okay. So on the third day, uh, it takes time to take. So what she's doing on third day? Walking on that moving escalator. Yeah. So on the escalator, the escalator is moving. In addition to that, she is also walking on the steps. Okay. So the speed of walking on the steps is uh, say V1. So that is this distance, say L, divided by T1. So and the velocity V2 is the velocity of the escalator, and the velocity of the escalator is L divided by T2. On the third, this thing, uh, the velocity will be V1 plus V2. So why should we add that the speed? What speed? Sorry. See, uh, this V1 is velocity of Pt, right? Yes, sir. That is not going to change whether the escalator is moving or not. Okay, so V3 So in the third case, velocity of Preeti is velocity of uh, the velocity of Preeti is velocity of the sorry, V3 is Okay, the velocity of pt is velocity of the right velocity v3. Okay, velocity of escalator. The velocity of pt is the velocity of her with respect to the escalator, that's how we change. So it is the net velocity Vn minus the velocity of the escalator. And this Vn is V3. Because V3 is the velocity with the stationary ground. So, so Vn is Vp. So Vn, the velocity on this, this one. Is velocity of Pt plus velocity of escalator. So first let me check whether I'm saying this. So V3 equal to V1 plus V2 and V3 is uh, L divided by T3. V1 is L by T1 and V2 is L by T2. So T3 is T1, T2 by T1 plus T2. Let me check. That is two. See the one which is not changing from situation one to situation two to situation three. Actually, situation two she is standing station. One thing which will not change is velocity of PT. Velocity of PT will be same either whether the escalator is working or not. Is that clear? Yes, sir. She will climb up with the same speed irrespective of whether the escalator is moving or not. So here, V1, which is same as velocity of Pt. Okay, V2 is the velocity of the escalator because she is not moving when the escalator is moving. 
In the third case, there is some net velocity. Net velocity is the velocity with which she is moving with respect to the earth frame. Okay, so that velocity of PD is the velocity of her with respect to the elevator, right? So the velocity of the net minus velocity of the reference frame, which is the escalator. So the net velocity minus velocity of the escalator. So this is an important uh, relation. Dp is the velocity of PT with respect to the elevator, which is the velocity of the net velocity minus velocity of the reference frame, that is the elevator. And velocity of PD is same as the one in the first case, and velocity of the escalator is got from the second case. Is it clear? No, I don't understand the formula. No, the B1 is same as velocity of PD. Is that clear? In the first case, she is climbing up, right? So that, that is her property. That is her velocity. That's not only change. Okay. In the second case, she is, she is stationary. Only the escalator is moving. So, so B2 is same as velocity of escalator. Yes, sir. Okay. So this is also clear. So in the third case, velocity of PT with respect to elevator, that will not change. Her velocity will not change whether the elevator is stationary or it's moving. So, VP is velocity of PT with respect to the elevator. That is the net velocity minus velocity of the escalator. VP is what? Velocity with respect to the elevator, right? So, VBA is VB minus VA, where the velocity is with respect to A. So, here it's with respect to the escalator, which is VP. So, it's net velocity minus escalator velocity. And this net velocity is V3, the velocity in the third case. So this V3 is the velocity with which PT is going up with respect to a frame, which is fixed to the ground. VP is the velocity of PT with respect to a frame attached to the escalator. And okay, v, with respect to the observer, PT has both the, her own velocity and her escalator velocity. Yeah, so the, with respect to the frame attached to the ground, there is a escalator velocity and also uh, net velocity of Preeti. And Preeti has got her velocity relative to escalator, which is the one which is not going to change from first case to the third case. Preeti's velocity with respect to elevator will not change. Whether the elevator is moving or not moving, she will climb up the same speed. So velocity of Preeti in the first case and the velocity of Preeti with respect to the elevator in the third case will be same. If, is, if she's climbing up, say, one step in one second, in the third case also, she will climb up with one step in one second with respect to the elevator, not to the ground. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So the relative velocity of Preeti with respect to the elevator in the third case should match with the velocity of Preeti in the first case. So velocity of Preeti, which is the property of Preeti that you can get from the first case, Okay, and velocity of escalator can get from the second case. In the third case, both are there. PT is moving and also escalator is moving. So from the ground, you will see velocity of PT as from the ground, that will be the net velocity. So with respect to this reference frame, you will be seeing Vn. But velocity of PT with respect to elevator is velocity, the net velocity minus the velocity of the escalator. Like VBA is VB minus VA, and VPT is VBA because it's a relative velocity. That is the one which is not going to change. Okay, so you think about it. Is it clear? The VP is VP velocity only. See, VP is the, in the third case, it's relative velocity, right? With respect to elevator, escalator. You said that Vn is V3, no? Then you, you put that V1 plus V2 minus that again, the escalator velocity will be V2 only. No, so Vn, V1. Vn is the velocity of Preeti with respect to the earth, earth frame. That will be, ah. that is same as V3, right? 
and then you will get VP as V11, you know, that is VP philosophy. Okay, you think about it. I'll tell this in the next class. I'll continue this thing in the next class. Okay, the important concept is velocity of PT is not going to change whether the escalator is stationary or moving, right? And velocity of PT is velocity of PT with respect to the elevator. With respect to elevator yes. only, her speed is not going to change. So the thing which is constant is her relative velocity, not other things. Her velocity with respect to elevator is constant. Her relative velocity is constant, not the actual velocity. So VP is actually relative velocity with respect to elevator. In the first case, the escalator is not moving. In the third case, it's moving. So relative velocity of PT. Actually, the escalator's velocity only works. Which one? V2. Ha, V2 is escalator velocity. And then velocity of PT with respect to uh, escalator will be V1 minus V2 only. No? Relative velocity. Velocity of PT is relative velocity. This is the relative loss. See, relative loss of PT is not going to change, not the actual velocity. Velocity of PT is with respect to the elevator, escalator. That will be remaining constant. See, if velocity of PT with respect to escalator is say 5 meters per second, if the escalator is moving with 100 meters per second, and the escalator is moving with 500 meters per second, what is not changing? Its velocity of PT with respect to the escalator is not changing. So, relative velocity is VB minus VA. Is it clear? You think about it. Okay. Okay. Uh, how many problems are you going to solve? In these, uh, in these problems, you are given up. You have problem sheet or not? Or I have problem sheet. I can send it to you. Uh, how many problems you will solve per day? No, I will stop. How many? No, sir, I haven't stopped yet. No, no, you have to. Okay. Every day you have to solve problems. Without solving problems, you do not remember anything, you will forget everything. Okay. okay. And, and we are solving problems. First things you just have to solve the problem without looking at the solution or, or, the, or the answer. Try for 10 minutes. If you're not getting it, then you look for hints or whatever. But okay, I'll send the problem list. So to tomorrow uh, you try. So tomorrow, what time you want to have a class? 3 30, right? So morning you try some, I'll send some 10 problems. Uh, you try at least uh, as much as possible, five, six, seven or 10, okay? And then whatever problems you don't, if you don't try problems, then studying is not, used because in the exam, what you have is problems. If you're not able to solve problems in your home, exam will be more tense. <laughs> then how will you solve there? Okay, so I'll send problem sheet today. Tomorrow morning can solve. What time you sleep? Sorry, sir, I don't get it now. No, so right now you want that. Tomorrow morning can solve some problems before the class. Okay. I'll send the problem. Sir, I'll send the problem, sir. No, no, no. I'll send the problems. Okay, sir. And uh, I have given you the Google Drive. Did you check your mail? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you able to open that uh, folder? This is your folder. Yes, sir. You can see more now. Are you able to access it? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'll put the problem sheet here and then I'll send you a WhatsApp message. So open this folder and take this, uh, this thing and then solve it before tomorrow's class. So tomorrow I'll uh, do 2D two, two motion. Okay. Project Taylor. Yeah. Okay. Projectile circular motion. Uh, yes, that is the end point, right? And acceleration. 
uniform uh, circular motion means what is uniform okay so we'll, we'll meet tomorrow thank you thank you okay bye bye